So being a filmmaker in a rural state like Montana means unconventional locations, slim options for rental houses, and having to be adaptable to changing conditions and changing temperaments. How does one adapt to this? There's a phrase that is often used for LA in that it is camera ready. People there are used to film sets popping up and blocking traffic and all the hoopla that goes with Hollywood. You know, obtaining permits and securing gear and crew in the camera ready places it's just part and parcel to those regions. Whereas in the rural locations, sometimes it's a bit more challenging to find the qualified crew, the right equipment, and in some cases feel secure that your location is going to even work out. Why is that? See, in some cases a location isn't used to seeing real camera crews come into their area, and what that even looks like at, say, a basic interview level. Now things are getting better with shows like Yellowstone in 1923 and spinoffs coming to Montana to film, but for the most part, those shows are bringing in outside crew and the budgets they are working with, those go much further in greasing the wheels so that they can get what they want and lock down locations. In some cases, like with 1923, locking down an entire convention center arena for their filming. We were recently hired to gather a handful of interviews of native women in Montana, and it was a mix of locations. In some cases, we were able to film the ladies that were local to us here in our studio. You see, this space that I'm in is sort of multifunctional. On one side, it looks like mom's basement with some sound panels that I put up to dampen the reflections. On the other side, it's a bit more of a blank slate that we, you know, we can paint, change it up a bit, propping and whatnot for other interviews of subjects that are closer to us. However, a good amount of these interviews we had to travel some distance from Missoula. The project saw us drive as close as two hours away to Butte or as far away as Wolf Point, which is almost 500 miles away and about an eight hour drive one way in the winter. So faced with dodging blizzards and spotting bald eagles feasting on roadkill, the real window of opportunity is wrapped up in watching the weather and what it will do. For this shoot, the particular challenge was there aren't any options in a town like this for renting a space that is big enough for a single interview. And there were like, two Airbnbs and neither were going to be good due to their echoey nature and general space requirements. You know, it's a delicate juggle between where the interviewee is willing to go, the weather and the available locations and finding a space that's not only large enough with some depth, but also sounds good because you don't want them to be too reverby. You know, I found a roadside hotel that happened to have a small conference room that I thought would work. It had some carpet, so that's helpful. I gave them a call, I booked it, I got a confirmation number from them, went ahead and booked the shoot. We drove 484 miles out in the blowing wind and light snow, white knuckling it the whole way. Let's see what we're dealing with here. All right, here I am in uh, Wolf Point, Montana, population about 2,600 people. Um, yeah, there's not really a whole lot here in Wolf Point and uh, really not much in the way of Airbnbs or anything like that to, uh, to conduct an interview. So rented a conference room here at the Homestead Inn. And now we have to uh, transform a uh, blank space into a uh, little studio. All right, this is what we have to work with here. Here's the ultra wide. Now, we could stuff into our CRV a nine foot roll of seamless paper. That could work. Uh, wouldn't be super comfy for an eight hour drive, but in scenarios where we'd need to load gear on say like a plane and fly to another location, you know, bringing a roll of seamless paper is just not gonna happen. So how would I achieve a nice looking backdrop that also has a sense of depth in a space that has neither the space nor architectural interest to see the location in depth? I like to use diffusion for this purpose. Here is a roll of Lee 253 Hampshire Frost. Oh, and if you're digging this video so far, I'd love it if you'd hit the subscribe button because it would be cool to see my channel grow over time. So in our setup, we remove all the tables, of course, and we set up a couple light stands and string up a large medium gray fabric. It's a pretty wrinkly fabric of all the traveling, but that doesn't matter much for this. Next, we set up two more light stands and a crossbar and we clamp the diffusion paper. Now it's important that the diffusion is doubled up. So we fold it over and we double it up so that it's like at a good density. From there, we make sure that there's enough room between the interviewee's chair and this diffusion. 
as we don't want any spill from the key light or the fill source to hit this material. This is where some flags and a good understanding of angle of incidence come in. The angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflectance. It's a valuable concept to be versed in with lighting for sure. We light up the backdrop and our subject, we dial in the exposure using false color, and I get the sound dialed in and we're off and running. All right, we're doing the thing here. So got our key light set up here, a couple of cameras. See what I've got here is this uh, Hampshire Frost is what this is. It's a leaf filter and it's covering up just a gray, gray backdrop with a hot light raking across it. Got just a kicker light here. Got a sound blanket as well as a just a fill source. A bunch of sound blankets on the floor just to try to dampen some of that down. <laughs> Hello everyone, my name is Miranda Crasco. My awning and name is Last Kill. I'm from the Fort Benlap Indian Reservation. I'm an enrolled awning and member. If there's one thing I enjoy a lot about this work, it's the problem solving aspect, the technical challenge and then achieving the objective. I love that. The creative use of diffusion to help add depth, obscure a background and solve a technical location problem could be a useful tool in your arsenal. So if you like this video, hit the like, Please subscribe, help my channel grow, that would be cool. Feel free to leave comments down below, I'd love to hear from you, and thanks for watching, see you again.